Well, hello there. Growing up as a Christian, I heard the phrase, the Lord works in mysterious ways a lot. That's just, that's just part of Christianity. And I wasn't taught to think for myself. I wasn't taught constructive thought, uh, critical thinking, anything like that. So I wouldn't have really pondered that a whole lot, I guess. I, I didn't find it too mysterious. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had the words for it at that time. But I went through some really fucked up shit. Yeah, no, nothing mysterious about it. Just like, really, that this is, this is what, this is what you have for me, and you're gonna call this mysterious and and wonderful. But now that I'm connected to spirit, who is a form of God, it is God, it's like, well, let's not even get into that, right? Everyone sort of has their own beliefs and it's, for me, it's neither here nor there. What's happening is all incredibly mysterious. You know, parts of the plan are being laid out, parts of the plan are still very much up in the air and in the unknown. I still feel like I'm being prepared for something absolutely phenomenal and that this move is still in preparation for that. I'm not moving into this purpose as of yet. I'm still moving into more preparation. So kind of all to say that I've been sitting with some really some things that have been coming up, well, things that came up yesterday, it's like, <laughs> let me just, let me just talk about it. So the whole U-Haul thing did not work out. I was going to go pick up a U-Haul trailer today. I was going to go get uh, the kids their rabies shots today. I think it probably would have been about an eight hour drive. I had to go quite a long ways on gravel and, you know, coming back with a U-Haul trailer just would have been slow going. I think a 7 by 14 I would have felt like this this whole last week and a half would not have been very stressful if I could have gotten a 7 by 14 trailer. My truck can't tow a 7 by 14 trailer, so I was like, okay, I will just do I will do a lot of letting go, which in itself felt and feels really good. It feels like I'm in like metamorphosis. It feels like I'm in transformation. It feels like I'm I'm going to I'm going through a rebirth and to just to just move without so much excess weight and just to go through all my stuff again and just do a seriously hardcore cleanse or purge or whatever you want to call it. It felt good. And I the last time I went through all my stuff, I made a conscious decision, you know what, I'm not going to let go of a lot of stuff this last time because I want to know where I was going to land up first. So now that I know where I'm landing up, I decided to just do like a major, major letting go. I was going to try to fit my life into a 6x12 trailer, which is, uh, which is small, but that's sort of where I was aiming for. So at first they said, yeah, we have a 6x12, and then later on that day they said, no, we don't, we have a 5x8, and uh, guys, 5x8 is not very big. And then I was going to rent uh, a storage unit down south and put all my stuff into storage until we'd come back and get it. That's just a lot of money, and it just wasn't sitting well with me, and I was just, I had a really difficult day yesterday, I was exhausted, um... And then I started sitting with the thought that I could very well never see my possessions again. You know, um, I just want to preface by saying, like, I'm I, I'm not a, I don't channel anything. I'm not like spirit isn't giving me any sort of messages and messages in that regard. I'm just kind of getting 
a deep gut feeling that I might be walking away and closing the door and not ever coming back. That's pretty intense. This, this is all really, really intense. Now, do, do I know what's coming in the future? No. Do any of us know what's coming in the future? Absolutely not. Um, I'm not too... I don't have a whole lot of wisdom on timelines and what's all happening, but I, I kind of wonder if... Okay. How, do I, how, how am I going to put this? I think we are in the unknown right now. A lot of shifting needs to happen. And I think if we can get ourselves to a tipping point, we can... We will not be facing... Uh, extreme darkness. I'll, I'll, I'll just put it that way. <laughs> I'll, I'm just going to be purpose, purposefully vague. I think that perhaps timelines are shifting and we're cycling through rapidly because maybe there is no absolute set fixed timeline for what's going to happen to humanity. And that's a shift in my thinking because I've always believed that my life, no I haven't always believed this, but I have been, it's been a pretty set belief of mine for quite a few years that my life is predestined and it has, it has a set out path and I'm going from A to Z and all of these steps have been mapped out for me already and the more I tune into spirit, the more I tune into my higher self, the more silence I sit in, the easier it is to navigate. I'm beginning to wonder if this is not the case. If uh, I think it was, like I really think, I. I I don't believe that that was a false belief, but I think that things are shifting so much, that so much is up in the air, that things are evolving and transforming in some ways very rapidly, in some ways really slowly, that there is no such thing as kind of A to Z <laughs> anymore. I wonder if I wonder if we are really being given the reins, if we are really being given uh, free will. Well, we have free will, but uh. Hmm. Uh, you know what? I think I'm just going to leave it at that. But I'm just, in my own life, I've been, I've, I've been solidly set down a really firm path. You know, it, it was, it was solid. It was laid out for me. It was being revealed to me as, you know, over weeks, months, years. And some of it, is maybe poofing <laughs> it's uh it's really uh, maybe a little bit discombobulating perhaps another aspect to this is that I am being tested to see how how much I have built my faith and trust muscle you know am I willing to walk away knowing that Believing that whatever's coming in the future is going to be way bigger than anything I could have dreamt or imagined. Am I 
willing to walk away without in, intense stress and anxiety and and fear and and tears and mourning can I do I trust or am I going to hang on to no I, I don't want to let go of my stuff I want to keep hanging on because I thought that was my path and I I've worked really intentionally on this path you know I was brought to the north here by the standing tall ones I was brought here knowing that I would be here for the rest of my life and now it's been two years and I'm leaving and I have to sit with that you know I was brought here on one very clear trajectory and that trajectory very quickly fell apart and I completely believed in that trajectory so that's why I'm wondering if like everything is kind of a little bit like quicksand right now the the material world is kind of like quicksand right now my emotional my internal realm that's getting more and more and more solid you know a month ago I don't think I would have been able to sit here and talk about this like this calmly and rationally you know this only came into my consciousness yesterday and I had a very difficult day yesterday it's like like wow like really like I'm you want me to walk away from all my stuff potentially but I don't know what's around the next bend for me you know maybe I will be moving into a completely furnished house at some point in the near future with my loved one by a little lake off grid and I will be fully fully looked after maybe I'll get where uh, I'll get there and there'll be immediate abundance where I don't need to go through the expense and the stress of moving my stuff like honestly we have no idea what's coming around the bend so I guess I just I want to encourage us to tune in to our to intuition you know like I started I sat with the thought of picking up a 5x8 trailer today and with the level level of exhaustion that I'm currently experiencing and it just did not sit well with me at all I was very uneasy about it I it didn't make sense to me and so I reached out to uh, talk to my loved one about it and he sat with it and he his tuition his intuition also said yeah no that's it's, this doesn't make sense this doesn't make sense now he he said well we'll come back for it you know we'll get we'll get uh oh, I need a visa and stuff like that so like once that's all settled we'll come back for it and I was like I'm not sure that we will you know and right now in this moment it's incredibly difficult you know but it's all going to be okay all will be well you know all is well and I feel so blessed to be able to work through some of this stuff so incredibly quickly you know <laughs> I feel like the fast forward button is still being pushed <laughs> I like um I'm at warp speed. I am being called to great, great things. I still don't know what it is, but I'm trying to, you know, once again hold it loosely. I have, okay, I'm like, that's, that's, uh, that's one topic I wanted to talk about. A little bit about something else yet and then I want to show you my jar stash I want to show you what I might be potentially letting go of and what I have been working on for the past years it's pretty impressive 
I'm not just walking away from a little bit if I happen to walk away. Um, over the past year, I have just talked over and over about how I am just, I'm, I'm, I'm I have to be in my masculine. The lifestyle that I live here, being semi off grid, heating with wood, not having water, being in a dry cabin, living below the poverty line, all that sort of stuff, I've have to I've had to live in my masculine. And I find it rough stuff because I am a deeply feminine woman and I'm pretty you know, I'm I'm, I'm traditional in the sense that I deeply want to be uh, provided for and protected you know that's that's what the traditional masculine wants to provide for the traditional feminine and I have just been longing and aching for that I uh, making decisions is not my strong suit and I love working like I'm a Taurus I love to work I love to physically work hard but I have found that my physical health has just been so slow in catching up with my emotional health and then with uh, this, the 5D ascension coming into my consciousness just, uh, you know, really hardcore a year ago. And learning about like the, the effect that the solar flares have on us and the intense shifts that I'm going through. I have just really let go of working hard physically and have focused more on being. Instead of preparing myself for all sorts of things physically, I am preparing myself emotionally. And you know, in the end, I, I, you know, I'm moving. So, I, I would have had to walk away from like five cords of wood or like from, from a garden and all that stuff. So like, it, it makes sense why I was just asked to sit. I have been crying more this week because I now have someone, I now have a masculine and tears for a feminine are, are healing, they're cleansing, they're not, they're not toxic tears, they're not ranting and raving, they're just, you know what, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm overwhelmed and I cry. And I was thinking about that today, how, how I've talked so much over the past year, how I'm just, I'm weary of being in the masculine all the time and not being able to be feminine and now here I am being able to express myself as a deeply feminine being, you know, the, the sacred feminine in me is, is allowed to cry now and it's beautiful. I'm allowed to be tired, I'm allowed to express it, you know, there's no words of, oh, like, why are you crying, don't cry, just, come on, you're making me feel bad, or anything like that, I am just being, I'm being held in non-judgment, and acceptance, and there's no guilt and shame, and it's, it's incredibly beautiful. It's, it, so much of the load has been taken off of my shoulders by having someone else to go and talk things through with, such as a U-Haul, you know, I'm not having to make decisions on every single aspect of my life, you know, he made the U-Haul reservation, he's been inquiring, calling border control, border agents and like, this is all stuff that I would have had to do completely on my own before and it's just I'm a lot less overwhelmed I'm like I'm overwhelmed with packing but just having someone else to help with logistics even if it's uh, 3300 kilometers away it's such a beautiful beautiful thing and I'm just in awe of how I'm just falling into, well not falling into, but I'm just embodying the feminine and it's coming naturally to me because I, I didn't know how 
I would be like am I actually I am a deeply feminine being don't get me wrong I am but after having lived in my masculine for so many years after you know being single most of my life I didn't know how it would actually come to fruition would I would I just naturally lean into my femininity or would there always be a little bit of conflict between me and the masculine or would my masculine try to keep rising up I didn't know right I just didn't know and that's something I needed to be in relationship to experience the new way of being <laughs> if that makes any sense so I'm just I'm sitting here today in awe in gratitude an appreciation and I just feel so I just have this deep burning desire for everyone who desires this to experience this this is my first time ever experiencing something like this It's taken me years and years and years to get here. You know, Spirit had me go down some really, really painful paths. If you don't know my past, uh, watch the video, Just a Woman from the Psych Ward. It's from wintertime. I have a really painful past and I had some really painful lessons to learn in the past few years to get me caught up on relationships and being more self-sufficient and being able to live on my own and take care of myself in a functional healthy manner. I hope I really hope that this encourages you and inspires you rather than um, bring on feelings of sadness and jealousy. I know what that also feels like. I know what that feels like. It's, it's rough stuff. Alright then. <laughs> let me show you what um, let me show you what I've been uh, working towards the past years. You know, living underneath the poverty line, I have never had much money. When I was in partnership for those couple of years, I guess I you not I guess I I used my money to buy things that would help with self sufficiency would help with, um, with help with self-sustainability um, I did not use my money on any little bit of extra money on pleasure or clothes or entertainment or anything like that you know looking back it I can see that it really went towards something that was deeply important to me and that is self-sufficiency and um, just being self-reliant and all that stuff so I have I'm not going to show you but I have a commercial dehydrator I have a 24 tray commercial dehydrator it is an, it is an absolute monster I had put it up for sale but I haven't had any bites on that I have uh, a baby dehydrator called Cassie she's a tiny six tray dehydrator so my hope was to sell Fernando. Oh, Fernando is my big dehydrator. I name everything. My hope was to sell Fernando and buy myself a, a 12 tray or a 9 tray, something like that, something much, much smaller. And then let me show you my jar stash. So I have been working at buying these jars for several years now. I bought out. I bought out someone's complete jar stash. Oh, sorry, Foxy. I stepped on her foot. I hope you can hear me. I don't have my mic on today and it's windy, like spring wind here. So I bought out someone's jar stash. Uh, it was her mother's jar stash. <laughs> and they like come in, they're 
antiques that come in the original, lots of them came in the original boxes and they're, the, the United States never had these, there's like, they were just made for Canada. So they have the, the glass lids with the rubber rings that go on them. So I, I that's perfect because the, just the lids that everyone are using now, you can use them for two years and if that, and then they're, they have to buy new, right? Um, they're becoming cheaper and cheaper and sometimes new out of the box, they're unusable. So I wanted to go really old school and to find this stash was incredible. It was like this woman lived 10, 15 miles away from me, uh, just, I mean, there are no coincidences, right? Uh, I lived in the middle of nowhere. This woman lived even more in the middle of nowhere. And it, it was the start of a beautiful friendship. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so here's my jar stack. I have everything I need for canning. I have a pressure cooker. I have a food mill. I have water bathing containers. I have like, I can cook or I can can outside. Um, I have boxes of lids. I've stacked, I've stocked up on lids. So guys, this is my jar stash. <laughs> this is not all of my jars because I have not this many jars, but I have lots of jars in the cabin because they're full of canning. They're full of my dehydrated stuff. And then I found myself a scratch and dent wood cook stove. So I can now can off grid as well. I'm really sorry that the, the front isn't visible because it's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So I got completely set up for this. And this is like another thing of uh, sort of the Lord works in mysterious ways or spirit works in mysterious ways. So I've never had an opportunity to really sink down and use all this stuff. You know, I've been collecting it. I've, I've been teaching myself how to use all of it. I've been looking forward to, um, I've been looking forward to sinking into, uh, off-grid lifestyle with a partner this is not something i'm able to do on my own and you know my partnerships haven't worked out and i haven't found community and this is something that is more community oriented too right so yeah um i'm sitting with i might i'm sitting with the thought that there's there seems to be a completely different trajectory coming from my life I am being called to be a leader um, I don't have the energy for a huge garden and to put up all this food and to have a little blue-eyed Molly business where I sell teas and weeds But I wonder, so what was the purpose in buying all of this? What was the purpose in stocking up in this? I, I can't imagine it's just to sell all this stuff piece by piece to people or to just simply walk away from it and let it sit here. It's, uh, it's very interesting. Like, yeah, so I'm sitting with that. I... I'm being called to take care of others. I'm being called to lead others through this very difficult time. I'm not being called to be, you know, to work on self-sufficiency and being self-reliant. I will be taken care of by others. I just... I just sense that somehow. So I was, you know, all those preparations were kind of to be self-reliant in a very, like, me and my partner. 
uh, like in a bubble maybe, if that makes any sense. I had no clue that this was coming into my life. I had not the foggiest notion that uh, like this other leadership journey was going to come. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's still shocking to me to be honest, but uh, yeah. I don't know, I got seeds, I got all my seeds for next year, I can't take those across the border, I stocked up this year in case, you know, who knows what's going to happen. So I'm going to let those go. I keep, honestly, I keep hoping that sooner rather than later we will not need to eat anymore. <laughs> I mean, right on. <laughs> I don't know, I, I just don't know. and. That is okay because I, I'm i okay with that more than I ever have been. I do not know what is coming and I am okay with that. I know that I'm supposed to be a leader. I know that I'm supposed to let go of that sort of stuff. But there's still I still feel there's a purpose to all of that. And maybe it's going to come along with me at some point and maybe it's not. And I just got to hold that loosely. I can't imagine that I spent all that money and um, gathering all these resources for it to just sit here abandoned. Life is mysterious. Oh, thank you for being on this journey with me. Crazy times. Let's adventure together. Let's keep each other centered, motivated, moving forward, inspired. And see where, see where this all takes us, moment by moment, day by day. Well, I'm off to get myself ready to move. I have two, I have two more sleeps guys. <laughs> two more sleeps. I have so much stuff left to do yet. Oh my goodness. So much stuff, but I feel good again today. I'm exhausted. Don't get me wrong. My, my bags are just growing and growing. My aunt told me the other day, you know what, if they grow anymore, you can like pack a lot of stuff into there. I'm like, yeah, I know. I just look poofy and not great, but this too shall end. This too shall pass very, very soon. So the plan now is to leave first thing Sunday morning. I want to take my tent down tomorrow. I'll just sleep maybe in the cabin for tomorrow night. Um, hopefully I can start the truck Sunday morning and just leave the yard early. We'll see. We'll see what I all get done. Um, I had a friend drop by yesterday that I only see once, you know, every once in a once every couple of months, and oh, I, I I asked her if she wanted any of my pots because I found out she's moving to a new a new place soon, and she was so excited and like I got beautiful pots here now, like the, in the heat they have grown so much. And the thought of having to dig them up before I leave and empty them, that really hurts me. It, it hurts my heart. And I can't take house plants across the border with me. And that was also something that broke me. There are a few things that just hurt. I don't have a whole lot of house plants. I've been slowly starting to gather them for my new place and now I can't take my house plants to my new place. And I have some that are deeply, deeply meaningful to me. It's, it, it's, uh, it hurts, but I finally found someone who will honor and cherish them. And then another thing that, <laughs> that hurts is I, well, two more things that hurt are I have just been throwing out into the forest, not to the garbage dump, but into the forest, my, my dehydrated stuff. And I've cried over it. It's just, 
oh, like I've picked this stuff, I've put this time and energy into it, I've picked it with love, it's like medicine, and now I have to throw it out, and it just feels so wrong. She's going to take it. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. And then I'm also leaving my stash of beaver sticks behind, and I've been collecting them for the past two years. I have such an amazing stash of beaver sticks and I, you know, I, I've never been in a place where I can like wash them and, and do what I want with them. So my stash has been growing and growing and to walk away from those as well just hurt really bad because they're sacred to me. You know, every stick a beaver put time and energy and it's like it, it was sustenance for them and it's just how I feel about some things guys <laughs> she's gonna take my beaver sticks and she's gonna use them I just feel so incredibly blessed <sighs> okay I gotta stop nattering on and I gotta get back to packing so I love you all I am back to being excited after a couple of days of swinging wildly back and forth into darkness and <laughs> exhaustion and and just biting off more than I can chew. I am back on the excitement and the wonderment of it all. I am so, so, so looking forward to getting there to unpacking and to spending more time with you. I have not been replying to any comments and it is one of my it's it's one of my intentions to reply to every single comment and I usually do really well with that. You know, I really do want to engage with you and I want to do some lives and I want to, you know, just nurture the few offerings that are new and I've just had to press a pause button which is okay but I will be back better than ever <laughs> in a very beautiful spot holy shit man the scenery there is gonna be next level so here is some love for you okay until next time <laughs>